Aloha, welcome back to Practical Printing. Welcome to part seven of our Moai series. If you haven't been following along, I highly suggest going back and watching the first videos in the series before this tonight. If you're not familiar with the PO Poly Moai, it is an SLA laser printer and the link to the manufacturer is down below. If you're interested in picking one up, there's links also to Matter Hackers and PO Poly Direct where you can pick up this printer. Tonight in part seven will be our final assembly video in the series. We're going to do the final pieces of putting this thing together before we move on to calibration. So with all that said, let's go do it. Okay, so like in the other videos, I've prepared the stuff that we're going to need from this one out of the boxes. I've taken the front and back panel and the door and I've removed the plastic or paper coverings from those. I've also went through and pulled out the switch and the hinges and all of the other pieces that we're going to need to put this together. One thing I want to mention is that in the end of the electronics video, one of the things that you saw me do was to put the switch on through the hole in the front here, or other side, the hole in this front over here. That was actually an error on my part, and I made a note about it in the comments for that video. That actually ends up going through the front panel, so I've go ahead and remove that from now, and we're going to set it aside. I'm going to move these panels out of the way so I can rotate the printer, and then I'm going to switch the camera angle so that you can see what we're doing here. So I think that's entirely in frame there. So what we're going to do is first panel that we're going to put on here is going to be the front. It's going to fit just like so. Now after you've removed the paper from these, they do pick up fingerprints very easily. So you may want to take the time to uh, clean those off and, and remove the fingerprints. I chose not to do it because I know I'm going to be taking them apart to take some pictures later. Um, but it's, it's your choice. Now, we're going to use six M316 screws, which I have in the pile somewhere here. M316. And it's just going to be six screws along the edges to tighten this down. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, that's on. Um, I do want to caution everybody that as you tighten those up, do not over tighten them or you will crack the acrylic panels. So you want them to be nice and snug, but you don't want them to be so tight that they're going to dig into this or crack the panel. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, so for the next step, we are going to, put, to start putting the door on. So you're going to need the bracket that looks like this. We're going to need the door, of course, and these two little guys. And we are going to need the M5 25 screws. And we'll set those here. And we're going to need the M5 12 screws, four of those. And the M5 12 is going to be used to attach the on the door itself and then the M525 is going to be used to attach it um, to secure the door on the panel. So let me go ahead and put these together here. Ah, and we also need the hinges. At least I forget those. Hinges are important. So let's get these hinges out and I will go ahead and open them up. like so. So we have all of our pieces here. I want to make sure that I have the right size torque wrench ready to go. Or I'm sorry, hex wrench ready to go. And we are good. So let's go ahead and start assembling this together here. Okay. 
Okay, we now have a functioning door. Look at that. And it closes nicely. Let's move on to the next step. Okay, for the next step, we are going to need the lock and key mechanism. We're going to go ahead and open this up and take that out. I'm going to just slide the key out of the way. We'll take this nut off. And this is basically going to slide through here like this. If you can see that, we're going to thread the nut on the back side. And let me rotate this so that you can get a better view here. Okay, so the nut threads on the back side. Now we have this Phillips headed screw here. And we're going to put the arm on like so. Okay, now we're going to test it with the key to make sure it opens and closes. So now we can leave that into the, in there like that. Now, a popular mod for the Moai that is all over Thingiverse, and I will provide the link to it down below, are some magnetic blocks that can be attached on here so that you don't have to lock it to keep the door closed that you can just use the magnets to keep it from swinging open. And I'll put the links to those down below, and that'll probably be one of the first mods that I do to this printer myself. Okay, for our next step, we're going to be putting on the door handle. Now these are going to use two M4 by eight millimeter screws, and they're just going to Thread through, like so, one through each of these holes. Now we have a door. Okay, our next step is going to be to install the switch. We're going to remove both the rubber O-ring and the nut. And it's just going to slide right down through the hole here. Where you can do it. Careful not to bump that galvo when you stick your hand in there. But that's just going to drop in just like that. Now, before I flip this to tighten that down, one more thing that we're going to do is we have the knob for this. Somewhere right in front of me. And that's just going to uh, push on like so. It'll click when you push it, so you might want to make sure that you give yourself enough room to rotate it and click it. Now I'm going to rotate this so that we can get to the back. We're going to slide the rubber washer and the nut over the back of this. We're going to tighten it up. And then we will attach it to the control board from down. Okay, we're all set. I'm going to go ahead and lock this door into the closed position for now, like so. Set these keys aside. I'm going to grab some foam and I'm going to flip it over because our next step is putting the back panel on. So be right back. Okay, so I just grabbed one of the pieces of shipping foam and I just want to make sure that the hole is good that it can sit on it. So I'm going to lift this up and out of the way. I'm going to lay this down. I'm going to place this on the foam. And again, the reason I did that was so that the knob didn't get swished. Now, our last step here for this is going to be to put on the back panel. So let me grab that. That's going to be 
Again, six screws just like the front was. Okay, that's on. Now we have one more thing to do, and that is going to be the power adapter that goes to this back panel through this hole here. Let's slide this down so you can see that. The hole here, okay? Now there's a nut on here that you're just going to want to back off. The, the nut here, kind of like we did for the power switch. Let it slide down, over and off. We're going to gently feed this through. For now, we can just let it slip out the side. We're going to put the nut back on. And just feed it back up to the top. Okay, once that's done, simply going to take this, loop it around the back, and it's going to plug into the back of that power control board, like so. And it's all done. Now, there are two more things in the instruction manual that I'm not going to cover on video, but I want to explain them to you. The first of those is tidying up these wires. The manual shows some pictures on how best to zip tie the wires and to get them out of the way. You have this path here between the laser and the galvo. So you need to make sure that there's no wires in that path. And it's hard for me to show that to you on video. So I'm just going to point you at the instruction manual to better see the pictures of where to tidy up your cabling and tuck them on the side. The second thing is there was a piece that shipped, and I mentioned it early on. It's this little tiny piece of thin plexiglass here that needs to be attached over the galvo. Now, this will go in here just over the galvo, like so, which you can't really see in the picture, but it's right there. And what that does is it protects when you remove the resin vat if there's any dripping or anything off of there or if you have a leak it protects that resin from dripping onto the galvo mirrors it's kind of a splash shield now it's recommended to use a little bit of a silicone adhesive just a couple of dots on either side make sure that you pull that back and just stick it on and let it dry i'm not doing that today uh, for a couple reasons one is the adhesive that i thought i had is apparently hardened up so I can't do it right now. But secondly, I also want to get some more pictures inside of there with it off before I button it up. So I, I think it's self-explanatory. So let's stand this thing up. And we'll get this out of the way. Okay, so you're probably wondering about the two side panels and the top. And I say that we're finished, but we, those actually still need to be done, obviously. Per the instruction manual, it recommends leaving the top and the side pieces off until after you do the calibration because it makes it easier to get at the tooling points that you need to do to calibrate things. So we're going to put those on per the manual later on and those are kind of post calibration build. But at this point, we are ready to fire it up and start making things happen. Okay, so that concludes part seven of our Moai series. In the next part of the series, we are going to start looking at loading firmware into the unit and then start walking through the calibration process. And then we'll be on to printing. Thanks for watching. I hope you're enjoying what we're doing here on Practical Printing. If so, please be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you're notified when our next episode of the Moai series comes out or any of our other videos. And with that, 
I bid you aloha.